Welcome back to Where You Live with Gene and Tony. Uh, if you uh, have... Uh, are just joining us now. Tony and I have been a little bit of a sparring match here this last <laughs> yeah. segment. And uh, I, and I think, we, there we go. That's right. We're <laughs> off to the races here. Once again, We uh, I think we were both frustrated because we both knew what we wanted to say, but it wasn't coming out right, was it? It certainly wasn't for me. I felt okay. like I wasn't get, I wasn't explaining myself. Okay, so here, here it is uh, in a nutshell, folks. <laughs> just, just joining us right now. <laughs> uh, Eric, you be quiet back there. <laughs> yeah, so if uh, what's happened is if an association does not like a rule that uh, the association uh, members, the board members have passed, and uh, they, uh, they can call for a special meeting for the purpose to, uh, it's to discuss and to also to vote and decide on what their wishes, uh, on what their wishes are. For this are issue. On this issue. And, um, I think uh, your your point is you were thinking specifically of this petition that this uh, listener wrote, mm-hmm. and uh, and and I agree with and I agree with you. It it probably could be written just a little bit differently to be a little bit more specific. And and you want to go ahead. And- Actually, I think it should be less specific. Her petition says we want to remove. We we request that you remove this new fee. Mm-hmm. So in my mind, if all the neighbors sign this and she takes it to the board and the they have the board says no, so they have a special meeting. That means the only thing that can be discussed at that special meeting is whether or not to remove no, this rule. No, what I what I'm no, what I'm referring what I was talking about is when you have the special meeting, a notice goes out. When the notice goes out, you need to address and outline the parameters of what is going to be discussed. Mhm. And what action will and will not be taken at the meeting. Okay. So, so that, that's two different things. So she said, she said in this case, we want we want to have this removed. The board says we think that that fee is good. Okay. So what we do is now we have a special meeting. Okay. How do we have the special meeting? The special meeting would be uh, what would be done is if the board seeing that there are the requisite number of, you know, let's say twenty five percent or whatever the governing document state. Uh, of homeowners that need to respond, the ho- board says we can see that enough homeowners the twenty five percent want to have dis- this removed. Dis- disagree disagree with this. So okay. let's have a special meeting. So then, so they then can- the board would design a notice that would say that we're going to have a special meeting for the purpose to discuss the newly enacted rule concerning the non refundable okay. fee. Okay. Okay. All right. And then uh, we will we will discuss whether to have the fee, not to fee, and a vote will be taken, you know, as to the result. Okay. Okay. And and so now you now people know and have the reason to either go or not go. That is that is uh, the right and privilege of every okay. homeowner. They may say it's not a big deal. I don't care what happens. So at, at the, with this first petition, you're saying you don't have to be so specific about. Excuse me. With this first, with this first petition, you can just raise the issue. Yes yeah, or no? Raise, it's raising okay. the issue, right. showing that there's right. enough interest to warrant to a talk special about meeting. it. Yeah. Okay. So that's it. All right. So then we agree. It would, we, we yeah, think. I'm going to think about this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell us what you think as well. Well, I, I think it is uh, time now uh, for us to move on to something a little bit. Uh, less volatile. Let's less talk about let's talk about shooting guns. Um, <laughs> I think that uh, that would do that. And uh, uh, we are happy to have uh, on the show with us now, folks, uh, a gentleman uh, by the name of Frank Rush, and Frank is the town manager in the township of Emerald Isle. Hello, Frank. How are you doing? Thanks for being on the show with us uh, today. Yeah. Happy to be there. Um, I appreciate you taking some time to be with us here. Uh, folks, uh, the reason we have Frank on the line with us is uh, on uh, January 29th, uh, 29th from the Daily News in Jacksonville, North Carolina, was this headline, Deer Hunting in an HOA. Is it ever a good idea? And what's happening is that there was uh, there are um, folks who live in the Lands and Homeowners Association, and they have uh, gone to the county courthouse to ask for a temporary restraining order to stop a deer hunt 
in the Emerald Isle neighborhood. And uh, what's happened is, uh, uh, Frank, you're with the the township there. Tell us, why was uh, this deer hunt necessary? Yeah, um, well, here here in Emerald Isle, we've been struggling with an increasing deer population for probably about the last seven or eight years. Mm. And every year in the fall, we do uh, we have a biologist from the North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission who does a population estimate for us. And in uh, in many years, we found that the population was manageable, right around a hundred or less. Um, this year, we're up to our highest number ever, about 174. Mm. And you know, for that reason, and combined with uh, numerous complaints from from our residents. Uh, about safety issues, about tick-borne diseases, about damage to landscaping. Uh, the board decided to have a controlled hunt uh, in select locations uh, in Emerald Isle. And we've got a total of five sites where we have deployed a pool of 13 bow hunters, uh, very carefully selected, um, and a lot of safety precautions put in place. And <laughs> I'm sure. we're, uh, we're just trying to reduce the, the population over the course of the next four weeks now and um, see if we can get it back down closer to that. So we're not, talking, we're not talking about, about people out there with shotguns or with uh, hunting no. rifles? That no, are, yeah. absolutely not. I mean, pu- pu- public safety has been the, the main concern, sure. and yeah. we have all sorts of uh, protocols in place and to make it as safe as possible. And um, honestly, I mean, safety... Obviously, is the biggest concern, but yeah. I think we've got so many safeguards in place that um, we're pretty well covered. Talk the about standpoint. a few of those uh, safeguards that uh, you uh, talked to me about here earlier before we went on the air. Sure. Yeah. We um, well, first of all, we have 13 hunters in our pool. They've been very carefully selected. Um, they're comprised of two groups. Uh, one is uh, a group of federal and state law enforcement officers that have. Uh, past certain education requirements and certain testing requirements for the town. Mm. And then we also have uh, local members of a special program called the Bow Hunter Certification and Referral Service. It's run through the North Carolina Bow Hunters Association. It's a special training program set up for bow hunters for these kinds of activities. So, you know, we've limited it to that group, and then we've uh, put them through additional testing uh, run by the town. So we feel like we've got a good, responsible group of people out there and um, we're requiring them to hunt only in certain areas, uh, at least 90 feet away from homes. Uh, we're requiring them to be elevated in the air by at least 8 feet so that any misses will just go into the ground. A um, whole host of other precautions as well, but those are the, the main ones. And um, thus far, we've been doing it since January 17th, and um, everything's gone very smoothly so far. The you know, the land's end issue is sort of a, a separate issue. Yeah, and um, talk about that a little bit. You, there, there's just a group of homeowners. It's not the entire association because the board requested that you do this, too, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, that's right. Uh, Emerald Isle is an incorporated municipality in North Carolina, but we've got several um, private uh, gated subdivisions sure. in the western part of town, and land's end being one of them. You know, from the beginning, the town's position has been if Land's End wants to be a part of this, you know, we're happy to help. Um, you all make the decision that you think is best for your community. If you want us to come in and do this, we'll do it. If you mm-hmm. don't, we're happy to stay away. Um, the Land's End Board of Directors went through uh, a pretty comprehensive uh, input gathering process, uh, sent surveys to all the property owners uh, in their neighborhood. Ultimately, they made a decision they wanted to be a part of it. Sounds like that's they something did. we always yeah. advocate. Sounds that, like they did the right thing. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah, I think they did. You know, they got. I think they have about 400 properties in there, and they had about 150 responses, which actually is not too bad. And that's of a that, good response. Now, yeah. you know, oh. the, if I if I could uh, interrupt here, I know that one of the things uh, in this article that was stated it said that the people who were uh, against this and wanted to put the restraining order uh, on said that uh, they wanted so because it violates their rights as homeowners and it interferes with their right to use and enjoy the common area. I'd like you to address that because I don't think that that is really the some of the main reasons. Uh, uh, do you? Well, I mean, I, I guess I'm, I'm certainly no expert on uh, property owner association law, Um you know, we feel like the Land's End Board of Directors clearly has the authority to make decisions for their community, uh, for their that. common area. Yep. So, yep. Um, and that was the opinion of our town attorney. That seems reasonable. Obviously, the judge ruled that they had standing to make that decision, at least at this point in the game. You know, he's denied the permanent injunction. So, 
Um, you know, I, we're going to be in common areas only. Um, we're requiring folks to be 30 yards away from any homes. Um, we're doing this in very early morning hours um, in wooded areas where I think most people won't even know that the hunters have even been in there. Mm. So, you know, I don't believe that it's uh, infringing on their rights to enjoy those common areas. But, again, that's not my decision yep. to make. That's their board of directors' decision, and, and that's the decision they okay. made. And, yeah. again, we're talking yeah. about this as something that will uh, take place, uh, or it started, you said, January 17th and goes till the end of February, right? Yeah, we started at our four other locations on January 17th, and we had intended to delay the start in Land's End until January 25th. Um, we were delayed a little bit, and um, the judge made his decision this past Monday, and um, I met with the Land's End president uh, this afternoon, and we're going to get started in there next okay. Monday the 6th. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, Frank, thanks so much for taking uh, just a few minutes of your time to be with us today. You're welcome. Oh. Nice to meet you. Yep. Have a good day. Thanks. Uh, you, go, yeah, I go just want to say, people may not realize how dangerous rutting deer are. They're extremely dangerous. My my brother worked at the Cedar Rapids or Davenport mm-hmm. Zoo, and most injuries in the zoo were caused by hoofed animals, by deer and deer family animals. They get really crazy yeah, in the uh, fall. You, you, you have that. You think of, uh, he talked about the increase with uh, ticks. and That's what, right. They're carriers of uh, Lyme ticks disease. with Lyme disease, yeah. uh, destruction of property, accidents, uh, you know, uh, people being harmed. Uh, or you with, hit a deer. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, there, so there was a lot. And, I, uh, yeah, I, I think it's a good idea. That happened uh, here in Minneapolis uh, about a year ago where they had uh, uh, bow hunters. Uh, Did they? Uh huh. That were given special permits uh, to be in some of the parks and some of the areas mm-hmm. in Minneapolis too, because we have the same issue here, even in the city yeah. itself. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, a, a good uh, a good idea. Well, we need to take another uh, break. Uh, when we come back, we're going to turn our attention to uh, the state of North Carolina again, and something where we're going to applaud the legislators there for something that they did. We'll tell you what that was after these messages.